Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, Star Wars, right? There's a lot of conversation around Star Wars. If you want to be a popular YouTube channel, you need to be pissed about Star Wars. No, I, I, that's just that's just a myth. I, I, I you know, don't do that. Um, but I think Star Wars and comics are are completely tied to each other, and it's a, in a way that people don't understand. And I also think there's a little bit of a lesson there for comics today. Um, Star Wars the movie uh, came out in May of 1977. Uh, it was popular, took the world by storm, all that kind of stuff. Who, lots of people remember that movie, and and uh, for those who weren't alive, of course, watched it later. But uh, Star Wars the movie comes out in May of 77. Star Wars the comic, Star Wars number one, the comic book, came out in April of 77, a month early, a month earlier than the movie. Um, and not enough time to where, you know, you could really truly claim it as it was a comic book movie. It wasn't, it was uh, clearly a movie that was designed. And then there was the, the comic book deal got struck and, and all that kind of stuff went on. But what's interesting there is that at the time, the comic books were important enough, relative enough, um, meaningful enough that the studio and the people making this brand new science fiction universe who were, you know, were ready to kind of thrill and delight theater goers, uh, believe that the comic book was a key part of their, both their marketing strategy and, and building this world. So much so that they worked to make sure that the comic book was ready to go. Not, oh yeah, not, not soon after the movie came out. Not like today when uh, trade paperbacks of, uh, of TV shows and other things uh, come out, you know, weeks or months later. You know, hey, we're doing a, a Black Panther movie. Let's let's put Black Panther in space and have it come out late. Why not? Um, it, no, there, there was a belief that, hey, we need to make sure these two things are working closely together, meaning the movie and the comic. And we want to put some time and some money into it. And, and they were tied together. And it's not like this was an isolated incident. It's not like this was some kind of weird fluke that took place. Uh, G.I. Joe very heavily uh, weighted the comic. The comic was an important part of that property. If we're going to get kids excited about, you know, G.I. Joe and the toys and everything else, you, you know, you have to have a comic book. Transformers, the same thing. The comic book was was key. Uh, there, there was a, a, a time when properties that were being created outside of comics, like G.I. Joe, Transformers, and Star Wars, uh, they were, you know, these ideas are being generated in, in buildings somewhere with focus groups or whatever is going on in terms of putting these things together. And it wasn't even a, um, it wasn't something that, that people questioned. It was, hey, Let's make sure we have the comic book out. Let's make sure we get the comic book ready. Um, if you look, and it's, it's interesting, if you actually go back and you look at some of the initial promotion for Star Wars on the news and on, um, oh, you know, all, all kinds of different places where they're kind of promoting this new movie, they make a point to mention the comic book. G.I. Joe and Transformers would make a point to mention the comic book. Um, in the stores, depending on where you go, there was a... I thought it was a KB Toys was one of the smaller ones, but there was a uh, what was it Lionel Playworld? I think it was like Toys R Us back in the day, um, way way back. But they carried comic books for the toys. They carried the Star Wars comic and the GI Joe and the Transformers comic. And in addition to that, if you went and you were looking at the Transformer toys, there would be promotional material to remind you that a comic book existed. You you wanted a comic. It wasn't uncommon that when new toys would get launched, they would come with a comic, that that was part of kind of the package. The point I'm making here is that, you know, what appeals to kids, uh, it's, it's not like the entire world has changed. You know, my kids obviously have now grown up in a digital age. They, lots of things are different. Uh, it is uh, heartbreaking a little bit to hear my kids complain when they have to watch something live and there are commercials and they're like, what, what the hell is this? Why fast forward through the commercials, dad, what are you doing? You big idiot. Hit the, they don't say that, but they're like, fast forward. And uh, they, they, you know, they, you know, it, like we get done with episode one of something and they're like, all right, play episode two. It's like, no, no, no. It's a, uh, it, it, we have to wait till next week. And they look at me like I'm a, just a giant idiot. They're like, no, just, just hit it. Like, 
just hit the button for the next episode. It's like, no, no, it's not available yet. It's like, what? Anyway, uh, but that said, when they are looking at toys, when they're looking at cartoons and everything else, they naturally want to see more of it. Um, I, you know, my daughter's been around comic books and, and manga and graphic novels and everything uh, because of me and, and seeing, you know, what dad does and kind of his work and, and everything else. So it's, you know, I, it's a little bit of a cheat. But when uh, their friends are over, when, uh, you know, they're, they're hanging out with people and they watch a movie, they want to know, you know, are there books available for this? Are there comics available for this? Kids are are ready and accepting and interested in taking things they like and exploring them in other mediums. They're not just like, uh, now I want to go search on Google or, or look for uh, YouTube videos about this. They, they want to read comic books. This is natural. This is natural behavior for kids. This is where I think we broke the, something in, uh, in comic book industry because kids are, are kind of predisposed to want to seek out and look at this other stuff. And we've decided to basically, uh, you know, stop making it. And for all, for dumb reasons, uh, I, I don't know how many times I've heard people say things like, well, kids today, they don't, they don't really want comics. They don't really, they're not really interested in comics anymore. And it's, it's absolutely not true. These people are not talking to kids, kids, you know, I, I've, of course, if, if, you know, you handed a kid a brand new iPad and you said, uh, you never have to leave this. You can just turn it on and play with it as long as you want. Several kids would just, you know, would, would do that. My daughter would sit down and, and do Minecraft for like 12 hours straight. Uh, but that, that isn't how they, that isn't how kids are, are, are taught or, or that's not how parenting works. And, and even then, and kids do self-select out. They do like to do coloring. They do like to deal with paper. They, they like to read this kind of stuff. So it's, it's curious because the audience, the market is there. The kids are ready to kind of pick up and read comics and explore other things. And once upon a time, the comic industry understood this and at least part of the publisher worked hard to make sure that there were deals getting done like the GI Joe and Transformers and Star Wars, where these kinds of properties could come up. And and that was important. And nobody was sitting there going, well, you know, it, there's there's no connection. I mean, one of the most frustrating and aggravating things that I hear is when I'm talking to somebody within the publisher who makes a point to kind of dismiss the connection between movies and comics. It's especially aggravating within Marvel, where, you know, their parent company, Disney, is is actively making all these shows based on the comics. And people are like, well, no, nobody really cares about that comic connection. It's like, you're not even trying. And I think what's happened is now decades have gone by, and certainly IDW has these properties out. And you have My Little Pony, and you have Transformers, you have G.I. Joe, and you have all this kind of stuff. But at the big level, you, you, you've you seen it flip a little bit. The movie studios no longer think, hey, we got to make sure there's a comic out. That's not part of the standard marketing strategy for, for a movie. They're willing to kind of let that go. And this is... Uh, this. I, I think the audience is still there. I just think people aren't shooting for it. They're not trying. And frankly, with the price increases and the way the newsstand is kind of evaporating and everything else, one of the most likely ways we can actually help the comic industry and, and grow things and increase the business is get that line of thought back of, you know, are we doing a movie for kids? I mean, for that matter, why isn't there a very aggressive push that every time there is a Pixar movie or something that Disney is, is pushing out. Why are we not pushing out an ongoing comic series? A lot of these movies uh, want to kind of generate an interest in the audience, uh, an interest beyond the movie, to where you would want to keep going and keep exploring and kind of build this mythology. The thing about Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Star Wars is that the comics were not just adaptations of the movie. They were aggressively trying to build and increase that universe. And what it did is it taught kids, people at an early age, that there was a whole world beyond what they saw on the screen. There was more to it. Not only were they generating more IP for the studios to maybe one day mine, some cases they did, in some cases they didn't, 
Star Wars's case, they uh, they did for a while, and then they decided not to anymore, and then they kind of decided to let some of it back in, but not really. I mean, that that's a whole cluster in of itself. But this this entire world of painting the picture to kids at an early age that you could have this expanded universe, you could have more than what you were just seeing. You let your you, you know the imagination building on some of this stuff taught people to want more, expect more, and to invest themselves emotionally into these properties. Right now, Dungeons & Dragons is experiencing a renaissance. The sales are higher than they've been in ever. And part of what's going on there is you're seeing a, a very strong appetite in people to want to tell their own stories and build their own universes and expand things. That's the nature of what that product is. Comics fit perfectly to that. And there need to be more people within comics who are good evangelists, who are good promoters, who are people who are going to say, hey, don't forget that comics can, in a major way, help build this universe, help make it better. That, that's, that's the power of what comics can be. And that's something that comics can be better, easier than movies and shows, which take longer to create and a lot more money. Uh, certainly better than games, which also take a lot more money to produce and are, are take longer. Comics can put these ideas out on paper, which, you know, not only does that help build an audience, but it helps remind people that these things keep going. One of the flaws in, I think, IDW's work and some of the Disney comics and others that come out is they don't, they, they, they work really hard not to expand the universe. They tell, you know, very cut and dry adaptations of things, or they do basic uh, one and done kind of adventures because somewhere along the line, some other idiot convinced people that there's no way kids could follow comics from issue to issue. This is another thing I hear quite frequently at cons from the publishers is like at a younger age, kids, kids just can't follow along. Never mind that every other medium, from cartoons to what's going on, on on Netflix and streaming services to games to everything. I mean, look at the popularity of Lego and Minecraft and some of these other kid toys. Kids absolutely can follow from one piece of content to the other. They're not morons that you know I have no ability to track beyond one single issue. That's absurd. And, and if you look at what's popular with kids, what's selling and what's getting their attention, th there's no problem expanding this universe. There's no problem growing it. Kids will do that. In fact, kids, if anything, get addicted to things very, very quickly. And if you give them a comic book with cliffhangers that urges them to go buy the next one, they will go do it. They will push their parents to, to, to do that. Kids love episodic kind of material. They have for years. I mean, many, many years. Kids drove forward a lot of the cliffhanger episodic way of telling things, uh, stories on TV. It's like kid cartoons and soap operas. I, you could draw whatever comparison you want there. But this, this was a huge part. As kids grew older, you know, wrestling storylines would continue from week to week were a big deal. And those helped sell, sell tickets. Somewhere along the line, we, you know, people got convinced that kids were simple, stupid, could not, didn't like to read, didn't want to pick up comics. They'd much rather prefer games and, and tablets and their phones, and that they, there's no way they could possibly concentrate from one thing to another. And the only thing I can think of is a bunch of people entered the, the workplace, and uh, they, they, A, don't have kids, or B, find kids to be kind of an annoyance and never really bothered to learn what they're about. And so we have all this, these, this very terrible advice of what kids like and what they don't like and what their behavior is. And, you know, all you have to do is pay even a little bit of attention and you realize, yeah, all that stuff's wrong. Kids will absolutely go in on all this stuff. And not only are you missing out a huge business opportunity by not catering to it, but you're shooting yourself in the foot for future products because the, the Star Wars G.I. Joe and Transformers generation of comics for kids, all those kids grew up and started reading Teen Titans and X-Men and Batman. That's what they all did. So by not focusing on them at all, you're just you're you're letting these kids go other places.
and you're giving up before you even began. You're like, well, we, we never would have gotten them anyway, so let's not even try. That's, that's absolutely absurd. Focus on kids, and you can make a lot of money. Don't treat them like idiots. Kids, kids are quite capable. And don't be afraid to get them hooked on, on really exciting stories and content. That's what they want. Get out of their way and, and let them do it. Provide your product to them. It, it, it would be the easiest thing in the world. But, but you do have to do so in a way that's going to be easy for them to pick up. Happy for kids to kind of connect and engage. Kids are very sensitive to not wanting to be uh, taught a lesson. If you if you pick up Star Wars and you pick up G.I. Joe and Transformers, a lot of those early co- comics, sure, they had positive lessons in there about, you know, good versus evil and all that kind of stuff. They didn't get into, like, you know, there wasn't a very special uh, issue of Star Wars where they went into kind of what your carbon footprint is. These, these are not things that kids want to digest. That's good stuff for school. It's good stuff for the parents to learn on. But... Kids are just, you're, you're trying to help them read. You're trying to help them get excited. You're trying to engage their minds so they want to read more. That's the value. And uh, it's it's just curious. I, I brought that up in the beginning. Star Wars, the comic book, came out a month before the movie. It was considered so important by the studio. They wanted to make sure that the comic book was out there because they knew this was how they were going to capture the imagination of kids on the big screen and on the page. It was a key part of what they were trying to do. How insanely different of a world we live in today. Thanks for listening.